Hey everyone, it's Brian. I'm back in the garage today. If you've never done a top end job on a motor before, it's important that you also check the specs on the cylinder, the cylinder head, and the piston. And that's what we're going to do today. So let's get going. So before we get started on this, I wanted to tell you guys a little difference about the A and the B cylinders on a Honda and maybe other manufacturers as well. So the B cylinder, believe it or not, is the smaller of the two. The B is smaller and the A is slightly larger. There's not a whole lot of difference, but you want to match an A piston to an A cylinder and a B piston to a B cylinder. So uh, with that behind us, let's go ahead and uh, start measuring the bore. So you are going to need a few tools for this. Feeler gauge something to measure depth, telescoping gauge or bore tool, and a caliper. This one is digital. I don't have a micrometer. I wish I did, but I'm going to have to make do with just this caliper. Next, using the telescoping bore tool, we're going to measure the inside dimension on the X and Y axis. One thing when you work with these bore tools is you got to be a little careful with them. One is you want to make sure that you rock them back to forth a little bit on inside the board just to make sure that they're seated well. And then once you get the setting, I turn in the top of this rod here to, to uh, set the, the plungers, you got to be careful to remove it kind of gently because you don't want to upset the dimension that it's created. So just a little, a little rock, not too much to bring it out. You don't want to end up squeezing these even more as you take them out because you've you know, put too much force into it. On this particular motor, the manual calls out four different measurements at different heights relative to the top. They call them top, middle A, middle B, and bottom. And those are all measured from some predetermined height from the top of the cylinder here. So I have an incremented ruler that I can set on various depths and that's how I'm going to determine the plunge depth for that. And then I have a bore tool. Basically we drop this in at the five millimeter mark. Make sure this arm is perpendicular to the face of the cylinder. Get our five millimeters. Get our measurement. 53.98. Other axis. 53.97. The next depth is 20 millimeters. So you can see I've got my preset plunge height at 20. This measurement is called middle A. Fifty-three-ninety-seven. Fifty-three We're doing good so far. The next depth is called middle B and this is 70 millimeters. Fifty-three-ninety-seven. And finally the bottom, which is 90 millimeters in plunge depth. On this one we only measure the front to rear or X axis on this one. Fifty-three ninety-eight on the bottom. So we measure top, middle A, middle B, all those on X and Y axis, and then the bottom on just the X axis. All those are in specification. So this cylinder is ready to go, at least in terms of the bore. So now we're gonna measure the top of the cylinder head to make sure that there's no warpage on the top of that. So the way this technique is done is you put a straight edge, and I got my nice, very reliable Starrett ruler. So this is a feeler gauge and the no-go is two thousandths of an inch or five hundredths of a millimeter. It's very, very fine. Very fine. This is basically a no-go gauge so this should not slide under at these points. So nothing there. 
So as much as you can, try to slide this feeler gauge between these studs. It's kind of hard to do because the ruler obscures a lot of it, but just do the best you can. Nope. Okay. Our feeler gauge would not pass under the ruler, so the top of the cylinder is flat. We have checked the board four different locations. We have checked the deck here of the top of the cylinder to make sure there's no warpage. So this thing is completely ready to reassemble and install on the bike. All right, so now we're onto the cylinder head. And one nice thing about the cylinder head is there's no studs in the way. So instead of using my store at ruler, I'm using the, uh, the square. And this surface is a lot better for use for this job because the general warpage happens between the studs. The cylinder head has the same amount of warpage service limit as the cylinder does, 0.002 or 0.51 millimeters. So basically we try to slide this under and see if we get a no-go, no sliding there. All right, the cylinder checks out, no warpage on that. So cylinder face is clean. If by chance that you do have some kind of variation in the uh, cylinder head or deck warpage, you can take this thing and run it on a surface plate. So the, basically the technique is you need something that's perfectly flat, like a piece of glass or something, and 1000 grit sandpaper, and you basically just rub the cylinder in a figure eight pattern like this to kind of smooth it back out again. You, you can tell that there's not a lot of variants to work with, but if it's just, you know, a, a very, very slight amount, you can flatten it out using that technique. So nice surface plate, and then run this thing in a figure eight pattern, smoothing it out. You same applies to the cylinder head if that's out of specification, but of course you have to remove the studs out of the cylinder in order to expose the complete face. So, all right, so cylinder head's done. All right guys, so we've uh, we've checked the bore dimensions and those are in specification. We've also checked the deck height on the cylinder with our feeler gauge, also the cylinder head as well. So now we're ready to go on to the piston. So let's get started with that. Now I have a brand new A piston to replace, the one that uh, took out. That is gonna be going in there. All right, next we're gonna put in our ring and check the end gap. This is the old ring, and I'm just using this one because I don't wanna beat up on my brand new ring while I'm uh, trying to determine some of these dimensions. I wanna go ahead and uh, save the, the good ring, the brand new ring, for when I'm really ready to install it. So no big trick here. You basically just slide this ring, you compress it and slide it into the bore. Then taking your old piston, you just push the ring in 10 millimeters down from the edge here. Just push it in and that squares up the ring and gives you a nice measurement. Now, let's spin that around. Now you basically take a feeler gauge and run it into this gap right here. So the service limit on the piston ring end gap is 0.65 millimeters or 26 thousandths of an inch. So basically we do not want this feeler gauge to pass through this gap. If it does, then the gap is too big and it's out of service limit. All right, so the feeler gauge does not pass through the gap, so this ring is good even though I'm not gonna use it. Uh, so let's go into the piston. 10 millimeters from the skirt. You can measure this across to get the specification on that. So a new piston should present between 53.93 and 53.94. Fifty-three point nine four. All right, so we're finished with the piston outside diameter. We measured that skirt. Next, we're going to go on to measuring the ring groove gap. So this is something kind of interesting. The specification for service limit on this is four thousandths of an inch, or 0 0.102 millimeters. Now, interestingly, every now and then the service manual is incorrect, and this is one of those cases. So you can see here, this is the specification for that groove. Now the inch measurement is correct, but the millimeter measurement is incorrect. So I'm going with what this gauge says, and we're gonna go with 0.4 thousandths, I'm um, four thousandths, or 0 0.102 millimeters. So, all right, with that behind us, let's go ahead and uh, slide this into the groove. 
The way you do this is you push down on the ring so that you expose an edge like of the groove here or between the ring and the groove. You expose an opening at the top. So I push down basically and then that gap right there, I try to slide in my feeler gauge and I like to check it in a couple different locations. See if it'll fit through here. It's very small, very small feeler gauge. It's kind of hard to make it stay straight. <laughs> but anyway, so, all right, so with that done, this is actually my older piston. I didn't want to stress my ring on my new piston. So next we're going to do the bore measurement of this wrist pin to see how that fits. So that's the next and last step actually. So we're almost done. Okay, next we're going to measure, measure the uh, piston wrist pin bore and the wrist pin diameter. And you always want to look on these to make sure that there's no excess burn marks or abrasion marks. This one's actually in pretty good condition, but let's put the uh, dial caliper on it. To do dial, to use your dial caliper to get into bores, it's not easy sometimes to get that right. The standard for the bore of the piston pin inside dimension is 15.002 to 15.015. My dial caliper only goes into two decimal places, so this one's right on the money. So the standard for the wrist pin outside dimension is 14.994 to 15 millimeters, and out of specification or the service limit is 14.98 millimeters. So 14.95, we are definitely worn out. All right guys, so cylinders in spec. Our new piston better be in spec or I'm sending it back. <laughs> but hey, anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, in addition to this video, I also have another video out that talks about rebuilding the top end of your CR125. So if you want to finish and, and watch the rest of that story, there's going to be a link somewhere. At the end of this, I'll put a link and you guys can uh, click that video and check it out. So hey, I just want to say one more time how much I appreciate everyone that watches my channel. It really means so much to me to get a positive feedback that I get. Sometimes people ask me questions and it really means a lot to me basically to be able to help someone else solve the problems that I've learned to solve. So hope that you've enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something today. I'll see you next time. Have fun in your garage.